Nah, I think something wrong. They was like, oh shit. They was like, what? I said, I can't feel my heartbeat or something. It's like I think I'm about to have a heart attack. I'm in the back seat. They was like, calm down, Nick. Just calm down. It's like, yeah, I don't know, y'all. Just call 911. Call 911. What's going on, y'all? I'm Nick Rochelle. And I am Carla Rochelle. And we're coming back to you with another story time. Make sure you just go ahead and hit the like the comment and subscribe to the channel right now because y'all we got Carla editing now <laughs> so hopefully these videos gonna start pumping out a little bit more consistently yeah yeah um if you could think of a schedule that you want us to maybe try with just one one day a week so far we're doing Saturdays every Saturday if okay. y'all like that let us know yeah all right so here's the story time this story time is um about my experience with uh with weed it's my experience with it and uh and and one particular time when it was a very bad experience <laughs> i'm sure we all got them mm -hmm. so um as y'all already know i came up my childhood was in st louis and believe it or not i didn't have any interactions with drugs um well i mean the occasional like oh let me get a puff of your cigarette to try it out or you know grown people give you alcohol just see what it is yeah. and, and as a kid you didn't really like it so but um, I did kind of like the c cigarette. That was kind of fun, but I wasn't smoking it right. And this is kind of what led into my situation that I'm going to tell you about. <laughs> so, um, when after I graduated high school and all that, um, I was offered an opportunity to go to Alabama A&M. Alabama they offered me a band scholarship. Other than that, I wouldn't have went to college. But because they offered me a scholarship, practically taking care of all of my with that the scholarship and the Pell Grant that would have took care of every semester and gave me some left over so it was a no-brainer um so I did go down there to college um and this is kind of when I started meeting different friends and this is when drugs got introduced to me so um I was hanging out with you know uh shout out I'm gonna go ahead and put a name out there shout out to Gloria A. I should have known like it was just like a little group of uh, it was like and we all was like some studs like this is when I was really boyish and uh you know trying to sag my pants and just doing the most <laughs> <laughs> um and they are the ones that really introduced me drugs to me like especially glory like she had more experience when it came to smoking weed and all that and me I thought I had experience and I thought I had experience because I puffed some cigarettes before like put it in you you know you, you, uh you, not your mama my mama didn't do it it was somebody babysitting me she came and she'd be like here put it in your mouth you can try it. and then you put it in my mouth I see <laughs> that's why I say grown folks ruin children <laughs> I'm telling you yeah so um so so um when they when they was like okay we finna smoke I was like they was like you smoke I was like yeah I do a little bit you know I love to do a little bit of smoking and uh so we get in the car and um they the, the weed we hot boxing it so the weed is we outside the college campus it's alabama and them outside of terry hall uh sitting in the car and they we, you know we smoking it or whatever they passing it and when it gets to me i do what i did when i did the cigarette i go and i i remember puff puff pass so i do it again and then I'll pass it. And when we, we got through smoking, naturally, you know, you feel, I felt like I had a little buzz. I was like, oh, shoot, you know, I love smoking weed. You know, I'm acting all goofy and immature because I thought I was high. I thought I was high. And um, I wasn't, I wasn't getting high for real, for real, because I wasn't smoking it right. So, but it kept carrying on like that. You know, week after week, they'd be like, okay, we're going to smoke. Nick, you want to smoke? yeah i'm down let's do it and i'm just feeling that little bitty buzz and i'm just like feeling good because you can't help but to get a little contact because you're sitting in the car and they high boxing so i remember this one night in particular and this is not even like the the worst night this is just the first time i had a paranoid experience where i got paranoid with weed um 
we was getting ready to go into um into a club club six uh for those of y'all who's familiar with huntsville alabama uh i don't even know if club six is still open it was a little hole in the wall club but it was a gay club and this we was back during what time though this was back in say 2008 2009 around well 2008 I graduated, I say 2008, 2000, early 2009. So this is around that time. And um, so we getting ready to go in the club. Uh, um, and I, uh, so we sitting, we was like, okay, let's smoke before we go in the club. We sitting in the, club, in the car and it comes to me and I was like, yes, I've been waiting to smoke all week. Like, hurry up and get that shit to me. Get it to me, boy. I'm ready to smoke. <laughs> <laughs> So when it got to me, I said, I'm finna smoke this shit good this time. Fuck that. And then I took it and I would do like this other day. Like I really let my lungs fill up because I felt like I missed it. And I let it out. I was like, yeah. And then I did it again. <laughs> noticing like I felt different and I think I started getting in my head a lot and this is kind of like a moment where I start feeling like I could feel my heartbeat everything I was like what if this is lace what if you know what if what if I die you know all kind of shit so then that's yeah. when right so then that's when I was like oh and then that's when I'm in the car nobody knows I'm about to start freaking out because they smoke and we do this all the time and then all of a sudden I was like y'all I think something wrong it was like, oh, shit. It was like, what? I said, I can't feel my heartbeat or something. It's like, I think I'm about to have a heart attack. I'm in the back seat. It was like, calm down, Nick. Just calm down. It's like, yeah, I don't know, y'all. Just call 911. Call 911. And they was like, and then Ariel, she in the front seat, in the driver's seat, laughing low key. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm really freaking out. This bitch up there, <laughs> Nick, just calm down. I was like, Maybe I need some water. Maybe I, they no. She was like, "You need some water." I was like, "Yeah, maybe I need some water. Maybe I need." Some. She was like, "Here, maybe we could find this gear." She found this old dusty ass water sitting in. It was like in a cup, like a McDonald's cup, sitting in the front of her car. She handed it to me, and I'm looking at. It. I can see little dirt pieces in there, but I still drank like a little sip of it. And then I opened the door, got out the car, you know, just trying to understand what was going on. <laughs> And then they was like, Nick, look, you just tripping. I said, I know I need to go to the hospital. It's like, Nick, we can't take you to the hospital high. They said, just calm down like you good. And then I, they was like, this is, you just having a moment. Just chill out. So then I just started calming down, breathing. Finally, when I calmed down, they got me to calm down. We went into the club and I couldn't do shit. The only thing I could, I could barely walk. <laughs> the only thing I could do is um, Ariel's girlfriend forgot her name sorry if you ever watched this i'm sorry i forgot your name but uh we in the car and the tory i think but uh we in the club and um the whole time babe I just, i'm laid on her lap like this oh who left your friend girlfriend yeah yeah <laughs> because and she was just trying to make me feel better because they knew i was having a moment where i was freaking out but that's not like the worst moment so i took a break from weed um you know, and then when I finally wanted to smoke again, I would take it slow. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what happened. Okay, so I took a break from weed, right? And then I finally started trying to get myself into it more. So what I did was I would uh, just take my time and, you know, try to build myself up to where I could smoke, right? So then... Um, this is, I get to a point now, like, I'm really good at smoking weed. Like, I don't, I don't freak out anymore. Um. But you don't smoke weed now. You talking about back. Back, back in the day. I don't yeah. smoke weed no more. <laughs> I mean, if it was legal, I probably would. Or if the job would allow us to, um, to, to, to smoke weed, I probably would still smoke weed. Because I prefer that over drinking, you know, whenever I was into that life. But, um, I don't have no problem with weed. But anyways, um. But I don't smoke it now, so let's put that on record. Yeah. Um, okay, so I passed, and after you know smoking weed with my friends, they, they were the only ones that I would smoke weed with. Like I, I would just—I mean, that's just who introduced it to me. They were rolling for me, all that, so I didn't have to do nothing. So 
So, so let me ask you this. After you freaked out that time, the next time y'all got together was they like, they ain't gonna trip on us this time, yeah, are you? Yeah, they were. They were. <laughs> but I just knew to take my time. I mean, because remember, I went on hiatus for a little while. But then after a while, I just kind of like start picking myself back up. And I was cool. So then finally, um, I decided to venture out because I was really getting into the weed thing. And I ventured out um, with some other people that I started to hang with, um, other than my friends, my main friends. And, uh, you know, just trying to show out because I really felt like I knew what the fuck I was doing by then. <laughs> and um, they was like, okay, okay. So this one girl, she was from Mobile, Alabama. She was like, hey, I got some shit I know y'all ain't had before. I was like, well, what are you talking about? You know, because I smoke weed, you know, because I'm feeling myself. And, um, they was just talking about, like, the different things, showing, she was showing the weed and all that, and then she was like, uh, yeah, some people eat the seeds, because there was some seeds in there. I was like, oh, for real? I took it, and I ate it. I ate it, and I was like, oh, that's good. So then... Was it really good? It was. I thought it was, it was like, I liked it. I oh, liked wow. it. Oh, wow. So then, you know, so I took another seed, and I ate it. And I was like, mm, maybe I should start eating the weed because I had never ate weed before. And then plus, I didn't know what the hell she had. You know, the fact that I'm just sitting up doing all this is so dumb. I even took some of the little uh, leaves and like put it in my mouth and ate a little, just a little bit. So, but nothing happened. And by this time, the blunt is rolled up. And it was, okay, it was this girl there who I was low-key trying to show out for. So that, I think that's what kind of happened. Because the girl who brought the weed, she was a little bitty stud. And, um... And she was already trying to show it. I already didn't really like her. But it's like, you know, during them times, you like you don't like people, but y'all still hang with each other type shit. But, yeah, she was talking about her loud-ass weed and all that. And then uh, the girl who was there, who I was showing out for, she was like, oh, you eating the weed? I was like, yeah, yeah, that's good, actually. So I ate, you know, two seeds, a few leaves. And then we go outside, and she had never smoked before. So she holding it to her mouth like I used to hold it. She like... The girl that you was trying to impress. Yeah. And um, I was like, no, that's not how you do it. I said, when you do it, you got to fill your lungs up, you know. So, let me show you. And then I'm putting it on here. Oh, so you're an expert now. <laughs> oh, so you can give expert advice. <laughs> Lord. And she's, you know, I'm trying to teach her how to uh do it or whatever. And then, um, after, so after the blunt, and y'all, I smoked so much, more than usual. Like, you know how it, y'all, some of y'all know how it is. Like, when you trying to low-key show out, the other little stud, she already acting like she like the best smoker in the world and shit. And I'm just trying to show, because I've been around the block now. You know, I've had my moment where I was paranoid. I had this, so I thought I was good. And, um, you know, so I'm smoking. Me and her just really, the, the, the girl who I was showing out for, she fell back. And it was really just me and the little stud, and we just going back and forth just smoking. I'm hanging in there. I feel stressed now about you because this is when it goes down. <laughs> so, and we were standing behind Terry Hall. So, when we stopped smoking, notice I didn't feel, I don't know if I was caught up in the moment or what, but I didn't feel shit. All I know is when I started walking around, so we behind the building, I started walking around the building, y'all. All of a sudden, it was like, do, do. I was like, I actually fell, but I was like, I was like, hey, calm down. You're just trying to freak out. So then I started walking again. So was again. that your heart? Yes. It was like, doo doo. I was like, oh. And then it was some people um, over there, some kids. They was uh, hanging in a suburban and they was listening to some music. I couldn't, All I heard was, ass so fat like the sun, sun, sun. It was like I was starting to freak the fuck <laughs> out. It was like. I could everything was loud, but it wasn't. Shit was echoing. And then all of a sudden, I'm in front of Thomas Hall. I'm sorry, I'm in front of Terry. Thomas Hall's over there. I'm in front of Terry. I go to the little steps, and I couldn't even make it up the fucking steps. I'm sitting on the steps. I was like, oh, my goodness. I, I grabbed my phone. I was like, Gloria. I said, I called Gloria. I was like, Gloria, please come down here and help me. I need help, please. And then... I, I guess I was hallucinating, babe, because I'm not going to lie to you. It was like some little 
like horses on like little bitty men. Like I don't know if my shit was laced or oh, what. Little, okay, that, it was some little horses. What? It was like little little men on horses, and they, and they was like literally like flying. It was what almost like they was flying like, around in my front head. Of you? Like they around was like you? they was like small, like flying, like a cartoon character, like flying around my head. And then I'm laid out on the steps like this. So wait, was your eyes closed? And like no, they were, eyes, op they were oh, open. They were open when yes. you saw this. So then Gloria come down. She was like, Nick, what's up, Nick? What's up? I said, Gloria, I can't move. <laughs> and then <laughs> she was like, What happened? What happened, Nick? I said, I went smoke weed with. I don't remember her name. She was like, Was it lace? Was it lace? I was like, Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I said, can you take me up to the room, please? Or, Because uh, I knew that we couldn't call the cops by then. I knew we couldn't call the cops. So she was like, you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. So then Gloria lift me up, and she uh, helped carry me up. We had to go all the way up to the second floor of Terry Hall. And she took me to somebody's room. What room was it? Oh, it was this one girl. Because Gloria's going to go out and hang with some girls herself. But she took me to this heavy set uh, girl room. And I guess she was babysitting me. She was there to babysit me because she wasn't going out. So um, I get into her room, and then all I remember is I got in her bed. I couldn't do shit, and I was like, I I couldn't do shit the whole time. I'm just like this. You was stuck. Yes, I was stuck. And then all of a sudden, I kind of I'm going in and out of sleep. I wake up, and the big girl who's sitting in her bed. I'm, it was two beds in there. All I know, babe, literally, her body would go from. She was regular size. Her regular size was fat. She go. She was skinny. And it was. She was big again. I got. And then what happened was, look, when I, when it happened like two times, I got up. I was like, she was like, Nick, what? And I'm just like, nothing. And then I just laid down. Tweaking hard. And then I laid back down. And then this is what happened. So eventually, I don't know how I ended up laying on her lap. So now I'm laying on her lap like this. And she just rubbing my back and rubbing my head. And there was this voice. It was a voice of a man or whatever. And uh, a black man. And it's like he was just talking. He was like, Nick, I know you're trying to fit in. I know you're trying to like be cool. you smoking and all that. It's like, but that, you don't have to do that. Like, you don't have to smoke. You don't have to do that. You already cool as fuck because you're funny. So... Like, just be that. Just focus on your personality and just, like, just know that you don't have to smoke weed to fit in. So then, um, it's like, after he gave me this long-ass conversation, I don't know who he was. That's why I don't know what the fuck happened. It was your, probably your subconscious. Yeah, I don't know. I just know it's a black man. And, um, and when he said that, um, after he talked to me, I had made a vow that I would, uh, never smoke weed again. But you did. But I did, but it was a long time after that happened. Like, it was a long time Like, after that. when you say long time, because, you know, some people, they'll say a long time, and then they'll be, like, two weeks later. Well, keep in mind, this happened in 2000, like, no, eight-ish, nine-ish. So, a long time, like, how And it's long? 2000, so probably, like, maybe four or five years after. Oh, so yours was really a long time. Yeah. Okay, because yeah, some people I don't really, know what a long time I really is. took a break from smoking weed. But, um, but yeah, so that's what happened, y'all. That was so when you started again, did you trip? So, this is what I did when I smoked weed, I just stay in my lane. When I yeah. would smoke weed, I stayed in my lane. I, I didn't like try to get all the extra exotic stuff. Um, I would really stick to mid, and if it was loud, I would really like just kind of pace myself and just watch myself to make sure I didn't freak out. And then, if I ever had little moments where I feel like I'm trying to get paranoid about something, I'd be like, Nick, shut the fuck up. And, you know, I, they wouldn't know, people wouldn't know what was going on in my head. I'd be just thinking, because it'd make you go in such deep thought, Man. you know? Yeah. So, you know, if, if I'm thinking about some shit, like, you know, but yeah, so that's what happened. So let me ask you this, because you didn't say, you said y'all came from around the building. So what happened to the girl you was trying to impress in the stud? So did y'all leave from around the building and everybody went their own separate way? Or yeah. did they see you, like, I don't. I don't know what happened to them. All I know is the only person that took care of me that night was Gloria and that big girl who was going from big to skinny, big to skinny. Them was the only ones. Them, them other two, I don't know where they went. So you ain't never smoked for her anymore? I smashed the other girl that I was showing out for. Later down the line. I thought I asked about that. 
about smoking, but <laughs> you did. What you mean? I just asked. I didn't smoke. <laughs> You, I said the, you said did I ever see that girl anymore that I was trying to show out for no I did see her before afterwards a while afterwards after we talked or whatever and the embarrassment ceased we smashed a few times and then after that happened she ended up getting pregnant by a dude so wow yep and she was super tall anyways like she was real skinny super tall Gloria used to fucking joke on me every time we would you know go out and so she'd be like <laughs> Nick, you so short in compared to her. So I was already embarrassed being seen with her. So she was only something meant for the bedroom anyways. So what would you say the lesson was that you Oh, learned? moral of the story, because we've been trying to do that. So moral of the story, just stay in your lane. Like if, if things are not, don't do things to try to, especially if you're young, don't do things to try to fit in. You know what I'm saying? Because that's really, it's like, that's, or, or try to show out. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't let your ego get the best of you. That's yeah. what the moral of the story is. Because even grown people can relate to this. You let your ego get the best of you. spend way more money than what you should spend. Yeah. You know, because you're trying to show out. Or, I'm going to go ahead and get this car. Because if I get this car, I'm going to be the hottest thing on the block. You know what I'm saying? Because notice, majority of the stuff we do, the clothes we wear, the things we do, it's for other people. Because we want other people to perceive us in a certain way. Yeah. So, moral of the story, stay in your lane and don't let your ego get the best of you. Alright, y'all. Right, thanks for tuning in, y'all. We're gonna see how color keep dropping these bangs. Hey! <laughs> Peace. Peace. Subscribe. <laughs>